this scene was such a great opportunity to show even just like all these mini arcs with characters, you know? We don't have a lot of time and we're not gonna, we, we can only tell Joel and Ellie's story. We can't go into such detail with Bill and Tommy and Tess and Marlene. But you get this great resolution between these brothers because you get the full arc of it in just a short, short amount of time. It's like the way I approached it is the seed has been planted. Like when she says, I'll just be more scared that Joel just needs time and in time he will change his mind because he doesn't want, he doesn't want any, deep down he doesn't want anything that will hurt Ellie or. So over there, the idea is just this little horse riding montages. He's, that change is brewing. And Gustavo's music doesn't hurt. What's so great about how this plays out is there's really nothing happening but just this passage of time. That used to be a level that you played through. And just during production cuts, we had to, we changed it. So it actually worked out better. It just became this idyllic idea that you never fully reach. You just see it from the outside. Where is this lab of theirs? It's all the way out, University of Eastern Colorado pointing out the, you know, this this moment that there was probably a time when these two used to watch college football together, you mm -hmm. know, and calling out, and he's like, hey, go Big Horns, you know. For our college that we made <laughs> I, I want one of their t-shirts so bad, University of East Colorado. <laughs> because Colorado is such a big state. I don't want her coming after me. Sorry for stealing your horse. Well, come back to town, let's discuss it at least. You know me, my mind's all made up. University, Eastern Colorado. How do I find this lab? It's in the science building. Looks like a giant mirror and you can't miss it. And the, the idea of offering Joel a place, a place of refuge, a place of redemption. Well, and originally we had some, you know, I think there was a line that we had, that I threw in there or something. It was like maybe someday or something. It was just two on the nose. And we ended up saying we don't need that. Yeah. This needs to be a... The look is enough. Well, and the offer, to me, is enough. Mm -hmm. We're about to hear Steve Bloom. Lovely Steve. <laughs> Silk-throated Steve Bloom. <laughs> Looking for the fireflies. They've all left. Yeah, no shit. What a macabre scene, though. I love that Ellie's just kind of thumbing through things. She's pretty frustrated with not having found the fireflies, not knowing where to go. Man, I love Steve Jim's voice. He makes me want to clear my throat. Trying to save the world. It's mean. Good luck with that. Do you know where that is? I know the city. Is it far? It Again, this is where we really start kind of getting the sense of how Joel and Ellie are just chasing their tail. There's, you know, chasing a phantom. Uh, for me, is what, what I wanted from this is not to overplay it, not to like have Ellie cry or scream or. Shit. And there's probably a lot of panic that happened between this moment and the next. Well, and what a Nazi. great, what a great line too. You got to tell me what to do. When almost the entire game, she said, "Don't tell me what to do." And here is where we've been lying to everybody when we've been saying you don't play as Ellie. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Asked point blank, do you play as Ellie? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, in this moment, a, a lot of this project and the story has been constructed around this moment, which is where the roles flip. Where now it's Ellie that has to protect Joel and essentially bring him back to life. Bye-bye, Bunny. It's a pretty cool reveal, too. The pan up. And, and uh, there's Ellie as the hunter. <laughs> so what we wanted here is also oh. is like, you don't know exactly what happened to Joel, what's the state, how much time has passed. Poor Buddy. 
But the way that she's doing that, you can see that she's been doing this for a while. You'll just startle it. Remember how tired your arms got holding that bow stretched? That for bow, <laughs> it was so heavy. And I, re <laughs> I remember that I was shaking and I was like, hey guys, <laughs> <laughs> this is really heavy. <laughs> Hello? There's David. Nolan North. Nolan North, Lisa ladies and gentlemen. Ruben Langdon is James. Ruben Langdon. What do you want? Ladies and gentlemen. This here's my friend James. Remember, like, uh, I showed Nolan a part of the game early on, and he's like, oh, I want to. You got to get me a part somewhere in there. I'm like, okay, I got something for you. <laughs> <laughs> I got a role for you. But I will, I will say this, because I mean, I was on set just for a, a brief part of this, but that's when I, I mean, I've always been a fan of Nolan's work, but that's when I was truly awed by him at how he crafted this character. He took what you had and just really brought it to life. Yeah. I told him the most important part is don't play a bad guy. Yeah. This guy's charismatic. We have to believe that people will follow this guy. Anyway. And that Ellie could trust him. Yeah. Buddy boy can go get it. He comes back with what I need. The deer is all yours. Anyone else shows up? You put one right between my eyes. That's right. It just shows what versatility no one really has. Yeah, that voice, I mean... It's so comforting. It is very comforting, but it's interesting now that I'm hearing it. Knowing what we went through, I get... Take that rifle. I get... It's a little unsettling now, hearing it. <laughs> I'm like, ugh. Back up. It's a weird gameplay thing, but we went through a version where we're like, okay, she can only carry one long gun at a time, so we have to put the bow on the, on the ground. And they're like, no, it's going to be two guns. Okay, well, let's put the bow back on her backpack. No, no, it's, it's she can carry two <laughs> <laughs> And we removed the scope. They used to have a scope on it. We're like, oh, we don't want to have the scope. Bring him with us. I remember being so relieved in this scene when we switched the gun out and I got to put the bow down. I was like, ah! <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love how David complies, too. How he just kind of, like, submits to a little girl. Well, the thing is, is, like, he knows the stories. He knows what happened in the university. And he's trying to figure this kid out. He's, this whole sequence, he's sizing her up. How, how early or how late on in the script did you write David? I mean, it was written not that long before we shot it. Because remember, you it like, started out like from a, a pretty small. King. Yeah, it was referred as the Cannibal King. We just what knew that Ellie was going to run into the worst of mankind, and she would persevere and come out on the other side. Uh, but then, once like Nolan came in and started like putting David together, it was like it became a lot more interesting to make him this really charismatic guy that is just infatuated with Ellie. <sighs> things get real, you see who kind of glimpses of who he really is. Because there is that moment in that other scene where he makes it seem like, okay, you're in control, you're in control, but she never was. Yeah. You've had some practice. Well, you handled yourself pretty nice back there. What's cool about, about David and the conversation I heard with Nolan about him is that he's trying to win Ellie over by being honest with her. And here's the part where he's like, I feel like she's ready, I'm gonna kind of reveal myself. And I think, like, I could still get her to come around. Now, you see, I believe that everything happens for a reason. Sure. The other interesting thing, uh, thematically, that's in, uh, everything happens for a reason is the same thing that Marlene really believes. That everything happens, like, it's something she repeats to Joel at the end. But you're kind of seeing how all these characters are just, how much they're willing to go for what they believe in. When you talked about like being surprised by your own writing, was that a moment like that, or was that something that you had intentionally done to where those characters were going to? No, I just, I think it's just something you think about, and there's a theme that just kind of sticks around in the project, and mm -hmm. then characters end up talking about that stuff because you're thinking about it all the time. Traveling with a little girl. You see, everything happens for. Again, another one of those moments where. You think Ellie's got control. Don't get upset. It's not your fault. Yeah, and then James there. I'm just a kid. 
I love that. Yeah. Yeah. No way, David. I'm not gonna let her know. It was such a small role, but I really like what Ruben added there. And that the dynamics between James and David, how there's there's conflict between these two characters, but there's still respect, and he's still listening to David, even though he's questioning his leadership right there. No, that's not your concern. Part of me, the, the, the way I read that was, every time he looked, every time James looked at David, it was like, who the fuck are you right now? Mm, what are you yeah. doing? Yeah. Like, he was putting on a show and he saw it. Oh, thanks. To me, it's interesting how David almost treats Ellie like Quarry. Like, you know, you're a sport. Yeah. Again, Ellie having this kind of bullshit detector, you see her scared here because I th think she realizes there's something really wrong with these guys. I don't know what. I just need to get away. It's so interesting from watching this, though. I would completely believe David. I would totally. I'd follow the guy. It's crazy. It's because you're a cannibal. <laughs> this little moment, this breath, before going to see what's downstairs. And again, for players, it's, it's, it would have been like a while now since they've seen Joel. Joel? Once again, Joel's asleep. <laughs> I only managed to get a little bit of food. I love how these roles have switched too. But where now it's, you know, the protected taking care of the protector. Move your arm. I used to be open. And then we're like, oh, we should probably stitch that <laughs> it up. It was also on the other side. We had to come back and reshoot it too. <laughs> continuity <laughs> actually this one we uh, I remember uh, we shot this one again because this is going naughty dog method everybody can like say the two cents Amy Puckett one of our coordinators said where's Ellie's backpack and we shot it without thinking about Ellie's backpack and it was like oh we should bring it back in and use it as a pillow it's like such a, a cool little touch you're gonna make it yeah those shivering things was pretty cool yeah. the towel thing right Let's say you did that. Well, yeah. I mean, he still... obviously he animated it. But... A great moment of them falling asleep next to each other, too. Again, her watching over him. <laughs> to me, you really get a sense of the oppressiveness of the world with all the introduction with all of these different kinds of enemies. It's like you, you feel like you're fighting this multi-front battle. It's not just these are the bad guys, and it's so clear. Yeah, and just how much Ellie's now willing to put herself on the line to just get them away from Joel. Wakey, wakey. It's interesting how much audio has made all of this way creepier. We were watching it without audio. It's like the foley of what he's cutting up and back and stuff. Yeah. Like. Ugh. <laughs> time to eat. <laughs> and that's the first time you actually see what it is that you've heard yeah. them refer to it. No, actually, this is the first time you just see it, and it's. It's, again, I, I really wanted to downplay the whole cannibalism thing. It's just, just something they have to do. Super. <laughs> he comes to bring her a tray of food. It's, it's, just, it's. This was so cool to watch when you guys were, were doing the scene. It's just like this battle of the wills, where he's just trying to like get in her head, and she will not let him. She won't give in. Yeah, this was one of my favorite scenes to shoot because some human helping on the side. No. There was there's just so much I there. I mean, the cannibalism yeah. and then him being all like rapey and molesty. <laughs> like, I don't know. I'm I'm a fan of the dark stuff, which you know. So when I read it, I was like, "Yes." Um, which makes me sound like an awful person, which I am. <laughs> so, I don't know what that says about me that I wrote this. <laughs> I know. Um, 
I remember I, you that night that I went home, I was just in a so funky mood. We have to take care of our own, by any means necessary. It was like it was a it was a cooler thing to read about it than after actually having to go in there. It, <laughs> yeah. it was really hard to do. Yeah. You're gonna chop me up into tiny pieces. But see again, I see David being this very gracious person. There's I no... mean, everything he's saying is is kind of true. It's like you kill to survive, we kill to survive. It's just what you do in this world. But again, Ellie just is feeling there's something else here. I still don't look at David as a bad guy at this point. Yeah. Oh, well, that's something too. Is like you, you were talking to me before we got this whole David thing, and it's like you want to work with Noel North. I want to do a scene with Noel North. I, want to do this. <laughs> I was like, and I'm like, oh, we cast Noel North. Like, great. I'm like, but you don't act with him. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, I feel super lucky. I got to work with him because he's 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 the king. He's so fun to work with. I mean, he really owned it. He threw himself into it, like yeah. darkness and all. And again, talking to him about it, he's like, I don't see him as dark. I just. Just this is just what he wants. That's it. I think David believes his own line of bullshit, or whether it's bullshit or not. I think David believes that he yeah. actually is doing the right thing. I mean, that's the other thing we discussed with Nolan is like there's a religious part to David, even though I never wanted that to come out in the script. But he really kind of believes that he's been sent here and he has this destiny mm -hmm. that nothing can really harm him. What am I supposed to tell the others now? And you really took that on on the chin that day too. Man, this whole sequence with David, I was so beat up and bruised. I say, I remember you week. came back the following day with bruises. <laughs> I was like, guys, look at me. <laughs> I had bruises we're like, everywhere. Oh, that's, that looks bad, but we're making we're a game do now. Some work <laughs> yeah. I love that you made it the little girl that broke your fucking finger. Yeah, that was that was a good call. Neil. Well, he calls her stupid little girl, so she throws it back in his face. I also like that she gives him her name under her conditions, which is, I'm going to give it to you, but I'm going to insult you. I also like the fact that Ellie is still so strong that even though she's in that cage, she's still... She's still kind of in control. Yeah. But it's a, it's a much stronger, that, that's a different strength than you'd shown anywhere else in the game before. It's like that winter was a really, really hard winter for you. Here's another funny scene. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, and you're actually, you're, you're wrong. I did get to actually uh, act with Nolan in this. Nolan was a trooper and let me torture him. Although we did record over his lines with Liam O'Brien. That's right, the lovely lob. The lovely Liam O'Brien. This actually is my favorite scene in the game. Is it really? And, and it, after I saw you guys shoot it, and then when I saw the animation and everything, I was like, I just love this scene. What is it about it you love so much? I love that Joel is just quietly violent. Mm. And that you pop off the guy's This is his job, right? This is what he's good at. Yeah. He's well, just like, and it's also for me, when we talked about this, it's like Joel going back to this, like, all right, you want you want this guy? I'll be yeah. this guy. We've spent almost the entire game for him to, to stay away from being that guy. But in this scene, it's like, I still it's, know it's like how to It's like we're going back to the moment in the beginning we saw him with Robert and Tess. Yeah. This is what he does. This is what he's done in this world. Yeah, it's a no-brainer. He's good at it. Chokes him out and breaks his neck right there. All for the benefit of that guy. And it's like, if there's any like notion that someone has hurt Ellie, then I'm gonna make every single one of you guys pay. Yeah. That's all right. I believe it. No way. And actually, this is the scene where I think he got beat up the most. Yeah. Where you did? Yo, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I had bruises over my whole entire body. It was ridiculous. Yeah, this wasn't stunts. This was you. <laughs> You. The thing that I, I love about this scene is how much Ellie's using her brains and her physicality, like everything to like get out of this situation. Right there. Roll on my sleeve. Look at it. I'll play along. <laughs> what 
Ruben helped so much during this part because choreographing sort of all of the little movements were so particular. And I think <laughs> everybody sort of knew at this point that I kept hurting people. <laughs> so so it was like, you have to give her the foam knife because she will hit me. <laughs> You were beating the shit out of that foam pad. I don't know what you were channeling. <laughs> I have a lot of anger. Stop! Stop! Fucking touch me! It's okay, it's me. It's me. We did very few takes of this. Yeah. This was like maybe three takes. Yeah. He tried to. I just felt like so intense with each one. It was like, yeah, that's. We got it. That's that's enough. It's the first time that you know Ellie and and Joel like. Embrace was that that physical contact. Yeah. It's such a great choice, I think, for you to. The dialogue wasn't important. Yeah, it was just a gesture. So it was like, just let the music take over, and it's, it's the same theme from when you know he's, his daughter dies. This was the scene where you got the most emotional. You almost cried in this scene. Oh, that's right. We don't have to do this. You know that, right? First time Joel questions the whole idea of this mission. But in a different way, though. Before yeah. it was, why am I wasting my time doing this? And now I'm saying, maybe that's not what we need. Maybe that's not the Maybe it's answer. not worth it. Well, yeah, it's not worth it. But I love that this comes off of what is your, you said was one of your favorite moments, which was the, the, giraffe, was the sequence. giraffe sequence. That fleeting moment where he gets to be a kid one last time yeah. after the whole David sequence. And how you even played that visually with, you just kind of catch the very last end of the giraffes moving there. So here we go. Oh, Ellie's dead. <laughs> It's such, I'm sure it was such an intentional thing to call back to the very beginning to where Joel finds himself in this situation again. And after everything that we've been through, it's like, I won't, I won't go through this. And I'm, Hands in the air. Just the, again, that irrational, maddening, yeah. desperate calling for help. I need. From this point forward, it's like the beginning backwards, where if this is the point of Sarah dies, like now you're about to do the carry sequence. Yeah. Then you like play as Ellie walking, like viewing Joel from yeah. the outside, and then you end on the shot with Ellie. So it's like the beginning reversed. Sorry about that. They didn't know who Let you were. Let me see Marlene again. And Ellie. She's all right. They brought her back. Uh, the discussions I had with Merle about this scene is, again, her desperation to find someone that will understand, that will empathize with her decision to kill Ellie to save humanity, and she's hoping she could get that out of Joel because he's the only other person that has cared for Ellie the way she has. And she can't get it out of him. I just think it was such a great way to bookend to kind of start and begin with Marlene. And it's so great that they were able to capture just the strength that she has, even when she was sitting in that chair. And again, she's completely empathetic, even though she's supposed to be antagonistic. It's a very similar line to what David says. Take me to her. You don't have to worry about her anymore. We'll take care. I worry. Just let me see her, please. You can't. She's being pregnant. This is one I've always seen Joel in the most parental role. Surgery. The doctors tell me the cordyceps, the growth inside her, has somehow mutated. It's why she's immune. Once they remove it, they'll be able to reverse engineer a vaccine. Yeah, her performance here was just but it grows stellar. So flawless. It does. Uh, I remember talking with the, the music guys that uh, were putting a lot of good stuff as music, and, I was, and the first few passes were 
There was this dark music that was playing here. Once Marlene reveals that Ellie's going to die, and I was like, "You can't. We can't play Marlene as bad because she's not bad. She's not. I mean, she's trying to save everybody." And if anything, I told him, I was like, you can go dark with Joel. Because again, when Ellie's life is on the line, Ellie's in danger, he lets himself slip back into the murderer, the killer, however you want to view it. It's so interesting. I wonder how many players, like, especially in this moment right here, how many sided with Marlene and how many think that Joel was actually the wrong ones. Like, dude, listen to what she's saying. But at the same time, this is the theme of the game for me right here is uh, as a father, you will kill everybody else to save your, your, your kid. Uh, and that, that has always been kind of the, the through line for me is Joel's willing to go to the end of the line, meaning sacrifice humanity to save Ellie. Again, Robin, Robin Atkin Downs. Downs. Guess what's going to happen to him? <laughs> But this was so cool too because Omen, I mean, we've seen all the way through both cinematic and gameplay, you know, Joel is able to take on everybody, but just this moment of resolve that I'm gonna wait for my moment. And it almost looks like he's a beaten, defeated person. Give me an excuse. And that grimace right there. It's like, no, he's not. Which way? Yeah, again, the way you've interpreted Joel is like a man who lets his emotions get the better of him here has to keep them in check. You see how like he wants to destroy this man and everybody here for what they're doing to Ellie, but he has to wait. He has to walking. catch the right moment. I said keep walking. Bam. Where was the operating room? And again, just such a brutal scene. Where? There's no threat here. <laughs> it's just it's time. Time is the threat. Now I'll let you die. This scene used to originally be all in the operating room. And Joel wasn't carrying Ellie. He like uh, killed Marlene and the doctors in the operating room. And then Peter Field, designer, just kept bugging me. He's like, I feel like we have to play this part. It's, you know, you have to carry Ellie out yourself. You can't just be like hinted at. We ended up switching the whole structure of this thing. He was right. It was like it worked way better. That was, that was one another one of those moments where we we're like, we're done. We've got it. No, we don't. <laughs> as a, as a cinematic, it, it was it was. I thought it was perfect. But as part of as a bigger part of the game, uh, it was weaker than letting you play through some of it. She won't feel anything. Again, the only hesitation Joel has is that this is what Ellie wants. And it's such a great decision to show, just cut to this, give, you know, give the audience, the player, just one last moment of, well, what did he choose? Just to, just to sit in that decision. It was also important to show the lie against the reality because the lie has so much weight here at the end. What the hell Throughout the game, Joel has never lied to Ellie. Drugs he might have disagreed or he might have dismissed her, but he's never outright lied to her. What happened? And for me, it was, this was the moment I decided to lie. We found the fireflies. Turns out there's a whole lot more like you, Ellie. People that are to me, it, it hurt to say these things. Ain't done a damn bit of good neither. Because once she started believing, once Ellie started believing that I actually had something, that I was someone, you're basically telling Ellie, you're not special, you're not important and everything you've done was for nothing. I'm taking this home. Yeah, in the first few versions of the scenes, there's like Ellie had all these questions like, sorry, what happened? Why, who was there? Why would they let you take me out with the gown still on? And, and it just was better if she said nothing and she just turned her back to him. Again, just to show how far Joel's willing to go to remove any threat for Ellie. I mean, we had talked about this before where, you know, she obviously has that bullshit detector. Mm -hmm. Let me go. And I just felt like I knew you were lying. Please. You know, I feel like, sh I feel like you just Ellie knows you're lying.
Come on. There we go, the end. So, original ending for this, hey, way back when we put the outline for the story together, is that Ellie believed the lie and they went off to Tommy's and it was kind of like this wide tracking shot as you see them kind of getting smaller and smaller walking off to Tommy's. But as we went through the story back when I was and the characters got more and more developed, it's like it didn't feel alone. honest. It didn't feel like Ellie would buy into all of it. And she got bit too. We didn't know what to do. I remember we went over and over and over this scene. And little things changed. Says, but every time I, la I sat and watched you tell this story, I was just you know, we can be all raptured by it. It was so easy to listen to you tell this story. I'm still waiting for my turn. Ellie. Her name was Riley, and she was the first to die. And then it was Tess. And then Sam. None of that is on you. You don't understand. I struggled for a long time with surviving. And you, no matter what, you keep finding something to fight for. Now, I know that's not what you want to hear right now. Swear Interesting to me. hearing arguments around the office uh, about how people interpret that last Swear line, that last that okay from Ellie. You said about the fire Whether it's you. okay, I believe you, or okay, I could put this behind us. Or, okay, I don't trust you anymore and it's over. Okay. That's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. We certainly, this is the, for some, for some of the scenes, it's the first time we had a chance to take a look at it. And it was, it was interesting to kind of, in retrospect, after everything that we've been through, be able to kind of recall what we were thinking on that day and then you know two and a half years later <laughs> how we I feel know, about these it. things it's, it's interesting we're ending this on the credits because there's so many people that have all these people have put the story together right i mean whether it's artists or programmers or without all these people none of this comes through it doesn't matter how good the story is or the performances or, there's hundreds of hands that this goes through yeah. and gets different kind of interpretations throughout the way until you end up with the final thing that uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed.